Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie. I am a third year, seventh and eighth grade special education language arts teacher. That is a mouthful, but that is my title. Try saying that three times fast. Um, but yeah, welcome back to my channel. It's been a couple weeks since I have uploaded to my channel. I've just been trying to get some inspiration on what to upload. I did do a week in the life um, last upload. Um, I'll link that down below or up here if you haven't seen it. Um, and I feel like everyone's been doing that. So I kind of wanted to do something specific to special education since that is my specialty. I think what I have come up with is good but we'll see depending on who watches this and what you guys say um but yeah before we get into any more of this video don't forget to like comment and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything else and thank you so much for watching let's get into this yes we are in my bathroom because i'm going to do or i'm going to attempt to multitask and today's video is going to be about ieps I'm probably going to title it like iep 101 like the basics sometimes people think that you know special education teachers is they just do paperwork and they pull out students and that's it but that paperwork is very important to each individual child and i feel like sometimes teachers parents and other people in the community just don't understand what it is so i feel like i should let them know what is an iep so that's what we're going to do today and i'm also going to be getting ready doing my everyday makeup i'm just so i'm doing something with my hands because sometimes i talk with my hands and it's like really really distracting and annoying <laughs> so um yeah i'm just gonna do my everyday makeup and we will see how this goes so first things first is what is an IEP? And the first thing I always start with is my eyebrows. Lies, I just lied to you, I'm so sorry. The first thing I start with is my skincare. <laughs> and um, I use the La Roche Pose. Don't know if that's right. I've just been going with it. This is what I use and it's the um, Hydrating Gentle Cleanser. Um, it's for normal to dry skin and I actually have oily skin. Um, my sister just gave me, gave me this cause she didn't like it. Um, so I'm kind of just using the rest of it, but I actually really like it. My skin's been doing really well. I actually have, look at this. I actually have a pimple from my mask. So kind of upset about that. But other than that, it's been doing well. And then I also use the Aveeno Positively Radiant Skin Brightening Daily Scrub. Sometimes I'll combine the two and use it together. But yeah, I really like this. And then I have my toner. I've already done all this, so I'm just showing you what I use. Um, my Witch Hazel. This is not the container that it comes in, but I bought this pump from TJ Maxx. And then I just poured the toner in this container. But it is the Clean Beauty Witch Hazel with apple cider vinegar. Um, I've been using this for probably the past two years just witch hazel in general and then i found this brand at tj maxx last year i'm um, gonna have just been using that and then my um, moisturizer i've been using the clinique moisturizing gel the dramatically different um, i use this after i do my toner and then the formula 1006 Seriously Shine Free Modifying Oil Free Moisturizer with Aloe Vera and Bamboo. Um, this is what I use at the end before I put on any makeup. Now, what I do first is my eyebrows. So, um, this is may or may not be a voiceover because I literally can't talk and do my eyebrows. Have no idea why, but that's just thing so the first thing that i am going to do is my eyebrows and i use the anastasia beverly dip pomade um in dark brown um but yeah so what is an iep an iep is an individualized education plan and it's for students who have been diagnosed with a disability and who are eligible for special education services. Sorry, I'm gonna do a time lapse here. I cannot multitask, so. Oh, 
Okay, so that's, those are my eyebrows. Let's start this over. So an IEP is an individ individualized education plan and it's for students who have been diagnosed with a disability and are eligible to receive special education services. Um, back in the early 90s, the Individuals with Disabilities Act um, ensured that students are receiving free and appropriate public education. Um, and what does that mean? That's just basically saying um, that students are in the least restrictive of environment for as much as the day as possible. Um, which means <laughs> that students are with their general education peers. Um, throughout the day for as much as possible. So what we see a lot of sometimes in the education setting is that students get pulled, well students with disabilities, get pulled out of their general education setting or get pulled out of class because of behavior. And that's a no-no because we do not, that's not okay. You should not be pulling students out of class because of behavior. It's not in compliance with our IEP. Essentially, you're you're singling them out if you do that, you know? You're bringing attention to them. They're not getting the education that they need. And really, it, with today's kids, getting pulled out of class can be seen as a reward instead of as a punishment. Remember that an IEP is a legal document and you know, being out of compliance, which means you're not giving that child the services specified in their IEP could have legal consequences. Um, that IEP team that consisted of the case manager, um, which is also a special special education teacher, the general, a general education teacher, the parent, um, it could also include um, supportive services such as physical therapy, speech therapy, um, any of those services, and even the student could be involved in their IEP meeting depending on their age um, and their understanding of what's going on with their services. Um, not, you know, following that legal document with fidelity is not okay. And you know, parents could either be your biggest supporter or they could be public enemy number one, you know? And it's very important that you foster a relationship with your special education students, parents, and your general education stu um, students' parents, um, but especially with your special education parents, you know, I feel like they need a little bit more support when it comes to their student, depending on the student's disabilities and their supports and accommodations. You know, you need to, you know, update them, talk to them. Maybe something that you're doing in the classroom, the parent can try at home or vice versa. Something that the parent's doing at home, you could incorporate into your classroom. And it's all about communication, not just in special education, but just education. Also talking to the student. You know, they're old enough to understand what's happening. Talk to them as well. Um, I recently had I served as an LEA um, for one of my coworkers, her annual IEP for one of her students on her caseload. And the student had um, talked to her mom and she was like, in social studies and science, she had peer support. And she was mature enough and has enough understanding of what her weaknesses are in her classroom to where she told her mom, mom, I think I would be more successful in science and social studies if I had um, co-taught services. And for her to be mature enough to know what her services are and to use the correct terminology is amazing. And that's because her mom talks to her and her case managers talk with her and she's able to know what she needs, you know? And that's what an IEP is about. What is best for the child? And if the child is old enough to tell you what they need, do it. Don't brush them off. Don't 
say, well, I know what's best. We're going to do it this way. Listen, that is a big part of an IEP as well. Listening to the child, observing the child, seeing what works and what doesn't work. An IEP meeting is held every year. It's an annual IEP and um, that's where the contents are reviewed and updated um, throughout the year. You could have what's called an amendment. For instance, if something happens medically, if the student is progressing and they no longer need an accommodation, or if you implemented a service and that's not working for the child anymore and you need to change that, you can't just change it willy-nilly. Like you have to inform the parent of your concerns. The parent has to agree um, and the team congregate, congregates again and you have an amendment and then that from that point on the amendment is the legal document moving forward until the actual date of the um, next annual review. IEPs are meant to ensure, see now I'm just talking, I'm not even going to make it anymore, um, but IEPs are <laughs> there to ensure, do I want to do, do some eyeshadow? Let's, let's, let's pull out some eyeshadow, hold on. I think I'm going to do the Juvia's Place, the chocolates palette. I don't do like bold eyeshadow. I really, you probably couldn't even see it. Um, but I just feel like it let, makes my eyeliner pop just a little bit more. Here's the palette. I think it's so pretty. Um, but yeah, so IEPs are meant to ensure that the child or the student's needs are being met as a whole. It's supposed to meet the child where they are, you know, and address everything that they need. Not just certain elements, you know, if they have a weakness in reading, then the IEP should state something. Um, they should have a goal addressing that reading um, deficit. Um, your goals that are in the IEP should be supported by data. And it could be the, in Georgia we do, well in my district we do the Iowa assessments and then we also do the Georgia uh, milestones and if you're saying that the child has a reading deficit those state assessments should support that deficit that you are stating in the IEP. If the child is reading at a second grade level and they're sitting in the seventh grade that child has a deficit in reading that should be addressed in the IEP. It shouldn't be glossed over or it should not be missing entirely because then you're not addressing the child's needs as a whole. You're picking and choosing and that's not what's best for the student, you know? So I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really, really light. I just do it just to give it a little, just to give me a little, a little color you know but yeah so i hope that that's like giving y'all a little something something you know for what an iep is um so everything when i got my job at this school everything was new i had to learn on the job you know and apparently i can't talk into eyeliner either so hold on I feel like I need to blend out my eyeshadow a little bit more. I am, disclaimer, I am in no way a makeup artist. Y'all, I'll just be trying to look presentable because I am not a morning person, <laughs> you know? I'll just be trying to get to school and look presentable as best as I can. So I'll just pull on the little makeup in the morning and keep it pushing like i was saying um when i got my job i was learning on the job luckily i have an awesome team that is still with me you know and i feel like now i pretty much know the ins and out of an iep and how to serve my students as best i can this year you know was a little bit more difficult because we're in a pandemic and no one really knew what the heck they were supposed to do but you know in a normal school year I feel like I'm a pretty badass teacher <laughs> like I mentioned before communication 
not just with the parent, not just with the student, with your coworkers is important as well. Asking if this accommodation is working or, you know, how is the student behaving in their class and whatnot. I'm gonna put it, this is the Fenty Beauty um, Instant Retouch Primer. I don't wear foundation. Um, one, because I have on a mask all day, and two, it's just too much, and I get hot at school, you know, even before the pandemic. I would just be hot, and I would, and my face is oily, I just couldn't, but I do put on primer. As just like, to mattify the part of my face that doesn't have any makeup on it. And yeah, here we go. This is my go-to makeup look. And that is my IEP 101 video. I hope that you guys learned something and I hope that I was um, specific enough if I wasn't please let me know in the comments down below um, and I can do an updated video or drop questions down below too and I will answer them um, in my next video I hope that I didn't scare you guys away I hope you're still with me at the end of this video and I really appreciate you guys watching please make sure that you like comment and subscribe to my channel I'm so happy that you guys are here and you have an amazing week. Please stay safe out there. Don't forget to wash your hands, wash your masks, and socially distance. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.